Hey everybody, Tom Bellator here. Welcome to the walkthrough for problem number six in PSET 4. This one's sort of in between the previous five problems, which were, I think, pretty easy, and the last one, which is this one plus just a lot of other bells and whistles. So let's take a look at what you were supposed to be doing. I assume that you've already read the um, documentation here, of course, the specification. Let's think about this. Let's look at the doc string in the function that we're supposed to be writing called play game allow the user to play an arbitrary number of hands. Therefore, when you see arbitrary number, you should be thinking, oh, I'm going to need a while loop because I don't know when it's going to end. It's going to ask for user input. You're going to have to get input from the user. And based on that input, depending on what it is, it's a new game, a repeat, exit the game, or some strange input that you don't know how to handle, you're going to have to do something. And when you're done playing the hand, you want to go back to the start. So let's think about how we can code that in at least some pseudo code here. And I'll do this in PowerPoint this time. I thought it would be easier. So the first thing is you want to get some input from the user. Now, the actual phrase for the input is in the documents. You can just copy that and paste that and use your normal input function for that and assign that to a variable. After you get the input, this is where the interesting thing happens. Based on that input, you're going to have to do some things. Now, for example, if the input is an N, which means play a new game, then you're going to have to play a new game, or play a new hand, I should say. If you get an R, that means that the player wants to repeat the last hand. Maybe they um, decided uh, some new strategy for the Scrabble, and they're going to try the same hand again. Also, people just get tired of this game, and they want to exit. And instead of Control-C, typing in E is a nice uh, alternative. And finally, the other thing is somebody might, their finger might slip, they might type something besides the N or the R or the E. And in that case, you want to send a warning to the user that you didn't understand the input and please input again, either N or R or E. Now, thinking in particular about each of these steps, when N happens, when a new hand is called, what do you have to do? One thing is you have to assign this output of a function called deal hand that already exists in the code, you're going to take that output and you're going to assign it to a variable. Then you're going to use the function called play hand, which you just wrote in the previous problem, problem number five, on that hand. And then it's going to do the stuff that it's going to be doing. Now, it gets a little bit trickier here if the user puts in an R. And the reason it's tricky is, what if it's the first time the person has actually decided to play the game and if they said repeat? There's nothing to repeat yet. So in that case, you're going to have to send an error that says, hey, I, you haven't played anything yet. But that should also trigger in your mind, how are you going to know if they played something yet? How are you going to keep track of that? I'll talk about that in a second. And then finally, if they do choose R, and if they have played a hand already, then you're going to play that hand, use the, the function called play hand, but on the previous hand, not on a new hand. That's fine, and then all this just keeps going as long as they want to keep playing. So some key questions here. One is, how are you going to control the flow of the game? And another one is, how are you going to store these hands, or at least the new hand and the old hand, or the previous hand, I should say? How are you going to store those? So let's think about this. The control of flow in the game, this is obviously what while loops are made for, these open-ended sort of problems that you don't know when it's going to end, but it only ends on a certain condition. For example, when the user hits E. Break is your friend. There's a lot of ways of structuring these problems, and I always like to set these up in terms of, first, a while true loop. And then inside there, for all the conditions that might end the loop, I put in a break. Other people like to have these conditions in the while statement itself. So while it's not E as an input, then play the game. Those are equivalent, perfectly fine. It just depends on how you like to do it. And you've seen so many examples so far, you should be able to construct something. How to store hands. Now, this is a bit trickier, I think. You've got to think about where and how to store these hands. So let's take a quick look at Python and get you on, your, on, on the way here. And let's see, I put in a little code right here. Um, basically, let's say we've got a while loop. We're going to get the user input. We're going to say, if the input is n, then do something. You know, For example, this hand, 
we're going to call, we're going to assign it to deal hand. This is the pseudocode we looked at before. These parameters are whatever's in the function. I don't remember right now. You're going to also want to somehow write that value of hand to something maybe called stored hand or whatever. But the tricky thing is where do you initialize this value of stored hand? What I would suggest, and I'm hovering over line 275 right here, is that you might want to do this outside the loop so that you are able to initialize it and then it's not being overwritten. Wherever you do it, you'll figure it out. And if it doesn't work, that's where the debugging stuff that you learn in this chapter and pre in previous problem sets will come in quite handy. If uh, an R comes in, you know what to do. You're basically going to have to have a warning if stored hand is empty, right? This is where stored hand becomes very important. If you don't declare it somewhere outside, then how are you going to see it if this if condition doesn't hold? So I think you get the point. And then otherwise, do your stuff, and so on. Um, this is a really nice problem. It's not too long, actually. And when it's done, you are able to play, and um, it's a really nice game. And it's as I said before, it's like 311 lines of code, which is quite long. So again, good job, and I will see you in problem number seven. Bye-bye.